Growing up in Fort William during the 1950s and 60s, Ron Bosnick spent a great deal of time participating in sports. On the diamond, he helped the 1964 Fort William Nationals claim our first Canadian Little League title. And on the ice, his talents were quickly evident as he made his way up through the minor hockey ranks, bringing home the hardware from an early age, a pattern that would continue for years to come. Earning a spot on the powerful Fort William Canadiens roster, he stood out being named the Junior League's Rookie of the Year. Making his way to the University of Minnesota Duluth in 1966, he went on to enjoy a standout career with the Bulldogs. Now, the rules of the day didn't allow players to hit the ice in their freshman year, so he returned to Lakehead to join the Canadiens for the Junior Playoffs. Picked up by the league champion Port Arthur Mars, he helped them win the Western Canada crown and challenged the Toronto Marlboros in the 1967 Memorial Cup Final. On the Bulldogs roster from 1967 to 70, he demonstrated great skill and versatility. Named the team's 1967-68 Rookie of the Year, he spent his first two seasons on the forward line and then moved to defense in his final year. Leading the team in scoring in all three seasons, he was twice named Team MVP, served as captain in 1969-70, landed both All-American and All-Western Collegiate First Team recognition, and received UMD's Outstanding Senior Athlete Award. His exceptional college hockey career earned him entry into the University of Minnesota Duluth Athletic Hall of Fame in 2001. Having signed a card with the Montreal Canadiens, he joined the professional ranks with their AHL affiliate, spending his first season on the Forum Ice before moving with the club to Halifax. Serving on right wing and defense with the 1971-72 Nova Scotia Voyageurs, he helped the team become part of history as the first Canadian team to claim the American Hockey League's Calder Cup. The following season saw him acquired by the Buffalo Sabres and heading off to their AHL affiliate, the Cincinnati Swords, for the 1972-73 season. Known for his scrappy style of play, he was called up by the Sabres in March of 73 and taking to the ice of the Boston Garden for his first NHL game, he quickly made his presence known. Now reports from the game stated how he got the Boston fans charged up by bumping their Bruins early on. Two of their players headed to the box within the first five minutes for retaliation penalties. Assessed three penalties of his own, he even took on Boston's star player in the game's only fight and resulted in Bobby Orr being ejected in the second period with a game misconduct. Returning to the Swords, he helped the team advance to the 1973 American Hockey League Finals where they faced off against his former team, the reigning champion Nova Scotia Voyageurs. And defeating them 4-1 in the finals, he claimed his second Calder Cup in as many years. Spending the majority of the 1973-74 season with Cincinnati, he skated in five more games with the Sabres, recording three assists. His efforts during that season saw him earn first-team AHL All-Star honors. But unable to crack the Sabres roster full-time, he was left unprotected by the club, According to Sabres general manager Punch Imlach, it was a difficult decision to make given that he considered him to be his type of player He did the best he could at all times. Picked up by Detroit, he opted to make the move though to the World Hockey Association and started 74-75, anchoring the blue line of the Minnesota Fighting Saints. Led by coach Harry Neal and playing alongside Mike Walton and Dave Peon, he remained with that club until it folded midway through 1976 when he was picked up by the New England Whalers. Although his all-out aggressive style of play earned him more than his fair share of time in the penalty box, it also made him a fan favorite. Acquired by the Edmonton Oilers in 1977, his experience and leadership saw him take on the role of assistant captain for the two years that he served with the club, and retiring from the pro ranks following the 1978 season, he returned to the Lakehead and donned a Thunder Bay Twins jersey, stepping onto the ice at the Gardens for the start of the 1978-79 season. Passing along his knowledge to the next generation of hockey stars, including some future NHL players, he took on coaching duties in minor hockey, leading the Midget Maroons to the quarterfinals of the 1982 Air Canada Cup Nationals. Moving behind the bench with the Thunder Bay Twins in 1983, he helped build that team into a senior hockey dynasty, coaching for three seasons leading them to back-to-back -back Allen Cup titles in 1984 and 1985. And that team's 1985 victory is considered one of the greatest in senior history, with an epic come from behind 3-0 to win four straight games in Cornerbrook, Newfoundland to claim the national crown.
In addition to his coaching duties, Ron also served the game as an instructor in the Canadian Amateur Hockey Association initiation program during the 1980s and as an advisor to a number of up-and-coming coaches. As the oldest of four brothers, he also influenced his younger siblings, with Mike enjoying a successful pro playing and coaching career, Ken playing in the senior ranks, and Larry serving as a longtime minor hockey volunteer. Ron has also passed along his love of the game to his son Bryson, who claimed a national midget title with the 1997 Thunder Bay Kings and also enjoyed time in the college ranks. The proof of Ron Buzzy Buzznick's impact on the world of sports over the course of more than four decades doesn't just rest in the multiple awards and trophies he earned at the amateur, collegiate, professional and national level, it's also evident in the many friends he made within the sports community and the willingness he has to pass along his knowledge and passion for athletics to others.